Hi guys, and thanks for watching again. In this video, I will be adding this button to this Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi Zero in this, in this case. You can also use the Raspberry Pi 1, 2, 3, whatever. And the reason I'm doing such a simple video is because every tutorial you will find about adding a button or a switch or anything which connects two leads together, two pins together, is telling you that you need a pull up or pull down resistor. And you actually do not, because the Raspberry Pi has them built in. Even the first version of the Raspberry Pi has them built in. You only need to enable them by telling the Raspberry Pi and GPIO library to use the pull up or pull down resistor. Which one you'll, you'll need, you, you just enable it by software and then it works. So no pull up or pull down resistor is required and not even the protection uh, resistor you can also use is not required to, to make this work. Only thing you need to do is tell it, in this case I connected it to pin 22, tell it to use, set, up, set it up as an input pin. As you When you con configure this as an output pin and I will press the button, it will make it that short of course. So that, now you have to be careful, but it, it works just by software. And I connected this one to pin 22 and a crown, and I told the software to pull up this pin to to high, so it's now in a high state, and when I press it, it is getting pulled to ground, and, uh, and then it is in a low state, or a false state. And the LED is just connected to ground and pin number 7. So that's all. Let me show my computer screen what I actually did. Now, and this is all the code I used. Let me start by going from top to bottom, and starting at line 1. I import the GPIO library, I import the time library for using the sleep function. And here starts the, all the magic. First I set up the board, I set up the library to use the board mode, which means I can use the actual pin numbers over here, 22 and number 7. I find that very handy instead of the BCM mode where I used to have to use the GPIO numbers. I find this way more, yeah, handy, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, and this is where the fun part starts. I, I set up pin number 22 over here and I in, define it as an input pin right now and this is where I tell the library to actually enable one of the in, uh, pull up or pull down resistors. In this case I use this constant and I tell it to use the pull up resistor which means that pin number 22 from now on is always up. It is always in a risen state It's or true if you want to call it like that. Now if we go continue the script here we've set, here I set up pin number 7 as an output pin and this is just the LED. I want to let the LED go on or off. This is the function I defined and here I add the event detection. I uh, actually say pin number 22 and this is GPI both. So I want both cases rising or falling. I, I want them both. You can also add GPI rising or GPI falling, whatever you want to detect. And this is the callback function you call. So in this case the button pressed function. So if GPIO input pin number 22 is high, which means that the pull up resistor is doing its job and it is not being pulled down to ground. So I'm not pressing the button over here. I'll just simply print released. It is not required, but it was debugging simply, simply debugging for me. And I set the GPIO output pin to zero or down or fault or whatever it is. Anyway, there is no current flowing and the LED is going off. And if it is false over here, which means it is being pulled to ground, the switch is connecting the ground to pin number 22. That means we have actually a pressed state, the button is pressed and we light the LED by setting this to true or one or whatever. And yeah, that is actually all there is. I define a while true loop over here that in that is just because we want to keep the program running all the time. If we do not add this, the program will end and there, therefore this, this event detect will not work anymore. So this is how I keep it alive and uh, don't know if that is the best method. I'm not a Python developer, I'm a PHP developer by trade. So yeah, uh, this works uh, for me. So let me get back to the normal camera once more. Now. That was very simple and uh, yeah, I'm actually uh, happy that it works because I'm going to 
add a camera to this Raspberry Pi Zero. Gonna add and connect it to my doorbell and take a picture of everyone ringing my doorbell. So that will be one of my next videos. And one other thing, you might heard that the sound is just a little bit better this time. That's because I uh, actually bought a studio microphone, a Samsung SC03U, I believe. And I added a little piece of software which uh, blocks all the noise, all the background noise. So the sound should be very clear right now. I'm very happy with it. And the next improvement I'm going to make to my videos is this desk, this, this shiny desk. I want it to be matte and, sorry, and, and better lighting. So that will be one of my next improvements. But for now, I think this video is done. And yeah, this was very simple. So thanks for watching.